Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Patrick. And we are Arcade High. We're here today to do a bit of Q&A. We fielded some questions from all of you guys um, over the internet, Twitter, Instagram, and whatnot. And we have about a dozen, actually I should probably grab my questions. <laughs> and um, Patrick has no idea what these questions are. So it should be kind of and, interesting. Uh, before we start, we should redo this because I looked right at the microphone and not the camera. They're not gonna tell a difference. Did any of you tell a difference that, that no, you looked at the microphone? Or I'm gonna notice. Okay, anyway. Um, so yeah, we're ready to go. Are we gonna? Uh, we got our beers. Well, I have my beer. Um, you, you don't want to try another? <laughs> no, I am right. In the beginning, no. Oh, let's go jump cut that. All right. Do I grab my beer? Yeah, grab your beer. Uh, so here we go. We're we're ready. Um, we got our we got our beverages. Mm. Uh, by the way, uh, PBR. PBR on the ASAP. And. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna begin our questions with JJ Rain asks, when did you guys join forces and realize Synthwave was your musical destiny and what inspired you guys? Our musical <laughs> destiny? They make it sound like we're some like fantasy. They make us. it sound like we know what we're doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a musical exactly. destiny. That's like someone who's on a journey right. that they've scripted out, like Lewis and Clark. No, we're, uh, yeah. we're we don't know anything. Yeah, I feel like we don't know anything. Um, we we fought, put notes down. We got, we make beeps and boops. We, we found each other in 2014. Yeah, that's when we met. Yeah, we met in 2014. Arcade um, High had been a thing for a couple of years. Uh, brought him on, and in terms of <laughs> being Three. our destiny, of I don't. That's that's nonsense. Uh, I mean, I'm glad that you guys like our music. Thank you. I, I see. Like when they when they when they asked, how did you know Synthwave was your musical destiny? I'm like. I'm pretty sure I called it techno when I first met. Right, he did. He did. He called it techno. He's yeah, like, oh, is it kind of like techno? I was like, ah, was, sort of. Because like techno was repetitive back then, and I, you know, everything went back. This is just the classic synthwave era. Everything was. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's kind of like techno. Are you humming outrun this? <laughs> I'm humming all. I'm humming all outrun tracks ever made, right? No, I know. Yeah, I don't know. That's. I mean, well, actually, so like, what inspired us? Um. Inspired us back then. I mean, I don't know, like artists, like I mean, stuff we were listening to back then, like Mitch Murder and that's rough for me to say because like, I was Leno, I wasn't inspired yet back then. Yeah, he wasn't inspired I, quite yet. Well, I was inspired to do music, but I wasn't inspired by synthwave. I didn't understand it yet. You, you had to tap into your uh, eight-year-old self playing Super Punch Out and Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, I had to, I had to guess, and I, I, I maintain this is a little too, a little extra information. I maintain. I, everyone hates me for this. I, I don't go back and watch the classics, the, the, the classic inspirations for everyone else. Yeah, he's terrible with movies. Have I you ever seen E.T.? I've not seen E.T. Have you ever seen Jaws? I've not seen Jaws. Have you seen Star Wars? I've not seen I've seen Rogue One. Okay, Andrew Tremblay, a.k.a. Stranger, does wonderful artwork. Check him out. Um, S-T-R-N-G-R, by the also way. Also wonderful music. True. He's a wonderful artist. Uh, art artiste. Uh, what's your star sign? I think that's Libra. Is that right? Is that like astrology? Oh no. Because there's like a moon sign too, and like a sun. Is there a sun? I'm sign? gonna get made fun of here. This is real. This is a real connection. <laughs> that's a real question. Andrew. I don't. I don't subscribe to this. I don't either. Like, I'm, okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this, and if I so if this is the wrong thing, if this is the wrong thing, I'm gonna get mm -hmm. hate mail. Mm -hmm. I is it? I, is it? It's not the Chinese New Year, right? No. That was the year of the monkey. I'm a Libra. I think that's the that's the star sign, right? I'm, I'm a Taurus. Okay, there we which go. Which makes sense. That I bust everything I touch, and I'm <laughs> worthless at parties. <laughs> that was also the year of the monkey, and there's no arguing that. Look, it's it's a constant affliction. Okay, so moving on. All right, we got Alex Bubalix asks. <laughs> that's her name. I <laughs> asks. I think it would be really cool to talk about your short film Rage. I think it'd be really cool to talk about your short film Rage. <laughs> and some of the music or behind the scenes of the movie. Um, I'm gonna keep this brief because I don't really want to no, talk we're about not. Rage. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, Rage was my senior thesis film in film school. Uh, there we shot a short, you can find it online if you look really hard, but I'm not gonna tell you where it is. I will. Um, <laughs> There is um, a shorter version that I did my third year, which was a three-minute clip that was supposed to be like a, an inspiration scene or whatever from like a 
theoretical longer film, um, which I think turned out better than the longer film. Um, but we did a Rage compilation that was on Telefuture Records, um, and we got some friends to sort of do some tracks for it, like um, Perturbator and Carpenter Brute. Just saying. The, en or the ending scene, where I won't spoil it, but where it fades into the other medium, if you will, and then blasts the drop to mm -hmm. Quite Operational. Yes. Quite Operational. By, by Monomer. Monomer, yeah. Great song. Probably helped get me into your headspace. Because mm. it was a very clear, like, got it. There's mm. a lot of imagery, imagery going on right now. Yeah, and it's just, it's set just, to a, a good outrun drop. And it's, yeah, it's just like chip elements. The camera zooms into an arcade cabinet and then goes through a screen and shows, like, a, a, a character, like, it says continue and it counts down. And the character um, like screams, and then the song "Quite Operational" by Monomer um, drops, and it's just really cool sounding. El Oso asks, "Sauce or gravy, and why?" Wait, no, no. <laughs> Wait, is this asking me my choice of the two in terms of like actual meat gravy, and then? No, I think that's what I thought, but then. But I they're definitely saying it's asking about like the this term is like a this referring like northeast this is, American. This is, Italian, this is like yeah, yeah. it's sauce. It's sauce. It's sauce. Get out of here with gravy. Adam, I'm very sorry. There's an Adam in my life, Adam Carini, graphic mercenary. I think he calls it gravy. I think we've argued about this. Uh, sauce. Gravy goes on like it. Because the Sopranos did it. Like and because the Sopranos did it, now everyone's like, well, you ate, what is it? Hey, Joey, stir the gravy. It's sauce. It's sauce, folks. Okay, moving on. Um, we got Taylor Matson, our boy Taylor Matson, who we still owe a beer. Still know about it, still worrying about it, still gonna get it to you. Um, will you play at my birthday? The answer is yes. <laughs> Slide into the DMs. Slide into those DMs. <laughs> Alright. Uh June Shana. What was it like recording okay, this is a bit of a doozy. What was it like recording female vocals yourselves on the album Kingdom? And what kind of woman did you imagine? that led you to decide how it would sound. I'm gonna say <laughs> Hold on, let me come up for air. Okay. Is June referencing the duets? Yes. That I- I assume so, voice, that's what I was, yes. And not Haley Stewart and Beckham. Correct, okay. correct. Um, <clears throat> that was influenced entirely as a mistake not as a mistake. No, I was I was messing around with a a little vocal software. Um, this is vocal now. Little little vocal software called Melodyne. Melodyne. Um, and I was ecstatic at how much it could do, and started to say, "Look, I could even make like a duet out of this." And then we Ryan kind of like you do realize you're working on something bigger than what you're imagining. This could be part of the story we're working for for Kingdom and and, and incorporating. This 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 could drive more of the story than you realize. Um, I don't think I had anyone in mind. No, I mean we just sort of stumbled upon the concept of it. Uh, long story short, so our album from 2016, Kingdom, um, is sort of like a loose concept album about a guy pining over a girl. He kind of goes mad, loses himself in his own mind in this fantasy world, and so the idea of him kind of pining over this girl, it's like once we realized that we could have this female vocal, this female vocal sound over top of. Um, the vocal that I did for Kingdom and Trace the Map and Ghost Council. Trace the Map. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, those, those are three. Those are three. And, um, you know, hearing that, I think, was sort of this weird inspiration of, like, oh, it, I mean, I don't know, it kind of plays into his mm -hmm. weird insanity of, like, he's imagining, like, him and them together. Like, yeah. together. And, and dare I say, like, the less, and, and this is going to be, eh, I don't think it's a sketchy topic, the less the script the female character was in Kingdom, the better, because it's from his perspective, and he's a creep. Right, he's and, a creep, and right. completely delusional, so, like, it adds to the idea that, like, he doesn't even know who this this girl really is. Right. Like, he thinks he does, but he doesn't, and that's what's, yeah, weird. Which, more to come on that. Moving on, all right, we got Donnie Gray asking, SNES or Genesis? <laughs> so, Donnie is a dear friend of ours, and Donnie loves a good argument, even if he's not participating. Although he'd love to participate. And this question, Donnie, this question was meant to make Ryan and I fight, wasn't it? Because you know <laughs> the answers. Do you want to say it on three? Yeah. We'll both say the superior console on three? Yeah. One, two, three. Genesis. Super Nintendo. <laughs> Johnny 
Pausen, Pausen, um, asks, will we get I was gonna read, no. Kingdom on vinyl? And then favorite soundtracks on, I wrote down NES, but I believe you said SNES. Kingdom on vinyl, we would love to do that. That'd be great. Vinyl's expensive. Vinyl's Vinyl takes a lot of very time expensive. Well. A lot of time, yeah, it's a lot of time. It's like, like three months is fast. Six months is fast. Well, yeah, technically. But I mean, six months is like average turnaround time. Um, it's just expensive to do. Um, very expensive. Honestly, like if you guys want Kingdom on vinyl, please tell us. Let us know. Because like the more you guys say, hey, we want this, we'll, we'll make stuff. We're very slow at coming to an understanding of things. Yeah, we are. Favorite soundtracks on SNES? Super Punch-Out. He's a big fan of Super I can, I can hum. Like, if you can name one of the fighters, I can hum their, like, at least the bass line to, I, to, to the point where I have still have a daydream where I'm going to get a MIDI pickup in a bass so I can make it play like... What's the, the Hurricane, dude? Hurricane. Piss and Hurricane? Yeah, Piss and Hurricane. What's this? Oh, you're going to... Oh, no, I think it's the... Oh, no, I have to check now. Can I check? Mine would be Star Fox? Yeah. Star yeah. Fox is a really good soundtrack. I mean, Donkey Kong Country is obviously a classic. How did... Yes. But I played Star Fox more. Mountain Weasel. Which software plugins do you recommend for really dark, intense 80s horror movie sounds and synths? Not sure if we're the best people to ask this question, but we will answer it. Serum. Serum. Serum, serum like, literally, like... If, if Serum don't do it... If Serum don't do it, no one don't do yeah, it. Yeah, no one... What? <laughs> uh, no, serum... Uh, Tau Noisemaker? Yeah, you're going to want to go with... 80s emulators. Kind of an 80s emulators type thing. Like the Tau series, the Tau... You know, or Tau, that, you know, LX. Yeah, yeah you know, LX Tau is good. Tau Noisemaker would be good. Um, but, the, but realistically, like, if you understand synthesis, Serum will kind of get it done for you. Just download the Tau chorus plugin. Yeah. That comes from that basically, like, that. that's what really the Tau plugins are all about. It's that chorus button, though. Hit me with your best shot. Fire da -da -da. Um, Represent creative. Can't read my own handwriting. Thank you for the YouTube tutorials, so good. Can you do a YouTube tutorial of one of your tracks fully deconstructed, possibly break down which synths used, plugins, arrangement, etc.? Absolutely. You know who does that? Jake Collier does that. Yes, he does. <laughs> can you want me to be, can you want me to, I, can, I, can do, I can do my hair like Jacob Collier. Flashbot asks, is Cyberpunk 2077 really going to be a period piece? He's he's like scarred because he As actually. At the time of this recording, Cyberpunk 2077 has been delayed once more. Is it a period piece? I don't know, but the, can 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 something that's trying to be? I might I might sound dumb here. Something that's trying to be, uh, uh, harken back to an older age. Can that be a period piece of its period? Is Stranger Things a period piece? I think. Can you? I think you just broke my mind a little bit. Can you? Wait. <laughs> Can you establish well, an era with a flag from well, an older, I mean, that's designed after an well, older no, 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 era? Wait, but it's technically, technically, wait, but it can't, it can't, it can't be a period piece if it hasn't, but it's a period that hasn't. Okay, moving on, um, Joshographer asks, when performing live sets, how do you decide how much material should be sequenced or tracked ahead of time versus preferred live? P.S. You're set in Orlando, Florida with Time Cop 1983. was great, and you brought an incredible amount of energy to the stage. Well, thank you. Thank you. Just to give a, a bit of a um, some context here, the way we do live sets, in a nutshell, is I have a launch pad, I have all the stems um, individually, drums, bass, uh, synths, arpeggiators, etc., etc., uh, on that. I can set them off at any point in time, um, and I can affect them with a couple different effects on a different controller I have. Patrick has a machine that he's doing effects and playing lead lines from that on his pad. So he's kind of technically playing live stuff when we're I, doing it over top of the sort of remix tracks that I'm, that I'm doing. This, this is going to get real nerdy, but if you're already a fan of Arcade High, I mean, this ain't going to be nothing new to you. Uh, I like to think of it like a, like a multi-tiered strategy game, and I feel like I'm 
overseeing a very specific because like, I'm doing one solo at a time or one lead line, and I feel like you like I'm I'm an item an item here, and I feel like you're paying attention you're paying attention to multiple items and I'm like one of those and it creates this really interesting dynamic that I thought wouldn't work but actually is like now one of my favorite things in the world that like I'm a step underneath Ryan on stage with what's going on and I we kind of rely on like we have a thing in our um in our rider we send forward like this a lot of a lot of acts love to have their music blasting them when they play we have to be able to yell at each other <laughs> Yeah. Like, no, not yet, not yet. Or like, yeah, so we have or, to like know what's coming up and stuff like that. So it's it's, it's really interesting because I always think Ryan undersells his position live with what all he's doing and how much he's wrangling and managing. But it's really it really becomes a circus because I we we practice we practice a fail safe. We practice how this how the set should go when everything goes wrong. And once we get up there, if Ryan decides, hey, I want to see how this sounds and hit some buttons, the most I get is, hey, I'm going to try something. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, all right, let's do it. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, just do it. Feels do right. Feels right. Do it feels right. And then, then if you're like Ryan and I have like two friends come over and sit on the couch and then stare at you while you do it and be like, is this a thing? Is this something you'd... And then when they say no, be like, thanks for the honest critique. We're going to do it anyways. And now we're here. All right. Travis Ross asks... I was wondering if you could speak on building a fan base and getting people to listen to your music. I think it's hard to get anyone on my friends list to listen to my music, let alone strangers. This is the final question we have. Uh, to answer your question, Travis, what you do um, is you pay them. You pay them. There's services online. Uh, I think it's like 10 bucks for a thousand likes. thousand likes. <laughs> yeah, you should just... <laughs> no, we're, we're just kidding. Um, I mean, to answer your question a little more specifically in terms of getting people to listen to your music, and you mentioned that you had trouble having your friends listen to it. I think a big thing is to also understand the genre you're in and really think critically about whatever genre that is. For example, there's someone online that I know um, on Facebook that was struggling getting their music out and they kept asking everyone, hey, like, how do I get people to listen to my music? And, you know, I was saying, well, you know, what's the genre? Like, post it X, Y, and Z. And then they said, I don't know what the genre is. And it's like, you know, if you don't know what the genre is, you're going to have a difficult time kind of getting it out to anyone but start there you know like don't overcomplicate it just figure out what genre you're in and then find some reddit groups it's as simple as that like someone's bound if you post it in a reddit, in a reddit group someone's bound to listen to it you know i mean whether or not they like it, it's a whole other thing but like someone will listen oh, that's pretty much it all right that's enough from us because we've been going on for way too long now i'm sure you're uh, tired of this already uh thank you everyone who submitted questions for us to answer it was very fun yeah, and um, like the video if you're enjoying it. Um, please subscribe if you want to see some more stuff. And um, we'll be continuing the tutorial series. We'll probably be breaking down a track here pretty soon. I'm gonna plan on having us do that next, actually. I'm not sure what song yet, but that should be fun. And um, that's gonna be about it. So I'm Ryan. I'm Patrick. And we're Arcade High. Have a good night, everyone. Oh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Perfect.